take a look at this. <coughs> All right, Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit is life, and Christ Jesus is the enemy and the from the law of sin and death. Well, what the law could not do, and that that was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned but sin in the flesh. That are after the flesh did well, not that same uh, well, I think we're on verse 4. four. Right? That the that righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. <coughs> Excuse me. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. So be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. <clears throat> and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. <clears throat> but if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead also shall quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit shall bear witness of our spirit, that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature is made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same hell. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and prevaileth in vain together unto now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Yes. For we are saved by hope, but the hope that is seen is not hope. For when a man sinned, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, and whom he called, then he also justified, and whom he justified, then he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? God be for us? Who can be against us? He has spared not his own son, but that delivered him up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that 
It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that has risen again, and is in the right hand of God, who also makes you to set the cross. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. And altogether, nor I, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, have mercy. <coughs> So this morning, I'm just going to continue on this topic of birth pains. <coughs> birth pains. Birth pains. <coughs> so uh, it really, what I'm what I'm kind of going through is this is Romans chapter eight. Yeah. And because um, if you read that, uh, that's kind of that's a pretty deep little chapter. There. Yeah, that is. It's very meaty. Yeah. And uh, it's got a lot of good things in it. And uh, and one of the, the the main theme of it is how the whole create creation is growing. And we are growing, and there's a birth that's taking place, that the Word is being born in us, and it's producing a change to the world, and it's, everything is being transformed. <clears throat> and that's why you have all the groaning and everything. <clears throat> and so last time we kind of looked at, um, at, at how when you're, when you're born again, the Spirit of God within you begins to recognize, you begin to recognize who your Father is. And you know where you came from, and and you begin as the, as you begin to eat the word, and, and recognize who he is. You're looking at him. You get your sustenance from him, from El Shaddai, the the breasted one, as as Brother Adam talked about. And you begin to you crying out uh, <coughs> to the Father, yes. to to God. Yes. And and so you can see in this Romans chapter eight this process that every believer goes through to, we're, we're, we're growing and striving to get to this place where uh, the, the life of God ha has no impediment in us, that we are allowing God to work through our members and that w so that God can see, can look at us and see himself made manifest. The manifested sons of God, where there's, that we are, uh, God is, is uh, there's somebody that's allowing God to have preeminence in their life. And then keep on going on up until one day there's going to, and I believe that time, I, 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 you know, I, I try not to put things off in the future anymore because I believe that now is the time where the bride is beginning to realize who she is and having an understanding of what the rapture is, to wit, the uh, redemption of our body, to wit, what has taken place, how God has done it, and, and understanding that, that there's nothing that's preventing you from going in the rapture. And that takes a, a supernatural understanding, a supernatural revelation, to see how God has brought you through all these different, very, very, maybe simple processes. A simple process of justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost for your soul, and then a cleansing of your spirit through the same process, and then a cleansing, a redemption of your body to get your body into a state. And all of those three very simple kind of little processes Justification, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and one. If you look at all a lot of these Old Testament types, you can see you can run it right from Genesis to Revelation. All these different little types to give us a better understanding. And one of those is is the story of Abraham. How in Genesis chapter 15, God calls him. He, he's he's uh, if you want to call it like birthed out of out of the uh, kind of the the way that his family was serving idols and and. Uh, believe in lots of different gods and all that sort of thing and God called him and said let's go this different direction and I'll read on further down in Genesis chapter 15 and it talks about how that that God put him to sleep and and through that process of sanctification a type of sanctification in the Old Testament how, how Abraham went through all those different steps he put he put him to sleep and he saw the burning lamp going between the sacrifices and all those different things and keep on going until in Genesis 17 he, he, God, uh, he, he says, walk before me and be, be perfect, a type of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then in Genesis 18, 
the Son of Man appears, God in flesh, and gives him a promise that he's going to have a son. <clears throat> so in Genesis 18, verse 9, it, it's, this is the, 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 the story kind of that Brother Branham always talked about, that, that uh, to, to have to identify the Son of Man. Because we know that, that the, the Son of Man was identified in Brother Branham's <clears throat> ministry as, as he would stand before people and, and, and kind of, you know, he would say that just like this man was able to identify Sarah in the tent behind him, Brother Branham would stand there before the people and turn his back on the congregation and call out things in the audience without even really being looking at, at, at things. And, and the, so the Son of Man was identified just the same way as it was when the Son of Man was there with Abraham. And so, and let's just read this little scripture. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. And I, I'm, I'm leaving off a lot of the different story about how Sarah laughed and so forth. But my, I want to kind of bring out that the point of this story and the point of a lot of the other stories in the Old Testament is, is that Abraham was going to have a child. Abraham, the birth of this child, that's the main focus. <clears throat> and so when you read in the Old Testament of how Abraham went through this process, of, he started off, uh, you know, uh, just a real simple change in his life. He, he took a little turn, and before long, this child was born. <clears throat> and that's, that's what's taking place now. You know, you hear a lot of times in the, <clears throat> around the message and different ones that are wondering if, if something's really taking place, because it, it, it sometimes looks like there's not there's not too much going on. And, you know, you could almost say, just kind of like uh, when when all the different people would look up there on the hill as Jesus was crucified. Well, that's there's nothing too much going on. It's just it's just a man, uh, a preacher, and two thieves being killed. But yet, one of the greatest stories that had ever been told was unfolding right there. So I, I think a lot of the, it, 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 some of these things can can seem very simple, but yet something so great is is really unfolding that God is manifesting Himself in His people. So that's what I mean by the, the the main thing is the birth of this child. Another story is the story of Ruth, where you read this whole the story of Ruth, and and you go through all the different things about how she she came to Boaz and she met him in the field and and all the, the planning of the harvest and all the different things that led up to the culmination of the very end of this whole story <coughs> was that she's going to have this child, the birth of the child. Now, now again, just to remind you, what am I talking about? When, when the word is born in you, you begin to cry out of Father. But up here, the, all these virtues are birthed in you. So it's giving birth to the word, to this child. But then when you come up to the very end here, there had to be something happen to get us to birth the word, to get us out of here, to take us from this world, this cosmos that we're in with all of our carnal ideas and everything, to, to kind of jump us up into eternity so that, so that our bodies would be changed. Something special had to happen. And what that special thing was, was that God sent a prophet. That's why he came at the end of the age to skip us out of this world, to, to preach a message, the shout, to get us... To, to understanding that our bodies could be changed. And that is the birth of the word. That's why in, in that story of Abraham, Abraham's body was changed. Just kind of a prefigure of what's going to happen for us. <clears throat> and we have to see that word be born in us, and then our bodies will be changed so that we can look upon him. We'll see him as he is because we'll be like him. Because the word is being born in us. And so let's let's just look at this at, at Ruth's child because it, it talks that the whole story of Ruth is leading up to this little culmination thing. That's why she had to have a kinsman redeemer, not just because it would be a grand idea so she could get the land back, but she had to have a kinsman redeemer so she could have this child so that her dead husband's name could be carried on. Malon, or however you pronounce that. I'm, I'm maybe not too good at pronouncing names, but <clears throat> so. Ruth chapter 4, verse 13 through 17, it says, So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. Because without, now thinking about us, without a kinsman, without a way to take you back from, to where that Adam had fallen from, just like Elimelech, Naomi's husband had had left his inheritance. You had to have a way to get you back to your inheritance. 
So the kinsman, the reason you have a kinsman is to restore to you the what was fallen, to bring forth, and really, that's what was hidden in the back part of God's mind was the, his eternal purpose to manifest himself in his children, to bring forth children and make himself manifest in them. And, and, and so that's why that's really, you know, think about that, how, how really deep that is. Why you really needed a kinsman. We needed a kinsman to be saved, but the ultimate goal of salvation is for God to make himself manifest in his people. <clears throat> and he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age for thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons hath borne him. Better than thee than seven sons. Now here, you know, in the Old Testament, you've got all these, uh, these messengers, Eliezer to Rebekah, uh, the the chief uh, reaper in, in the story of Ruth and and you know even in the New Testament you got all these ones these messengers that came upon the scene to prepare a bride for Christ now which is more important now this is this is a little bit controversial I, I imagine <clears throat> but you know as each messenger came on the scene what they're trying to do is produce a bride <coughs> produce a bride that looks just like another masterpiece that looks just like the original masterpiece of him, which is Jesus Christ. And so this bride is better, and, and, and don't trip up on the word better, but see all these seven church age messengers, they're trying, they're produced, their aim was not just to have a, a messenger kind of set over to the side and say, well, th there's the messenger. That's The goal is the bride. Right, right. So the bride is better to thee than seven sons. The bride is the focus, and a lot of times we, we get so tripped up over you know the day in the days of John Wesley. I'm sure so many looked at him and said, "Well, that's the focus is I, I believe that God sent a, a man to to get us out." But they maybe so many of them lost sight of the the purpose of his message was for the people to grab a hold to and believe it. And as each one of these messengers came on the scene, they were preparing a bride to get ready, and and that's what the focus is. Yeah. And now, now I think, you know, after the shout went out, then in that uh, the kind of the, the the sequence of what the rapture is, the shout, the voice of the archangel, and that's that's kind of where I'm going is that something in that in that period of the voice, when the the voice of the archangel all wrapped up in that is a birth pain that's pushing forth. Something's happening. Something's happening to the bride. The bride is catching a hold of who she is. And what's taking place? And so, and they only took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse on, unto it. And we, and we know kind of the type of how that works is that as the, as the word, the birth of the word comes forth, the bride is going to uh, hand it over to the 144,000, hand over the word, the same word that we've heard. And Naomi, the, uh, <clears throat> the old Israel is going to, the one that was before, the older is going to take it and run with it, so to speak. Yeah. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obi. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. So Obi, really, if you want to put it like this, that's, that's the purpose of this whole book of Ruth, is getting this son produced, which I'm typing that as the word. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> And so let's get back to where we were reading in Romans 8, 8, 15. Because this is what this whole, this whole little lesson is about. Birth pains, bringing the word forth. Romans 8, 15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit of adoption that's groaning within you and to produce a child of God that is not a child anymore, but grown up into maturity. Not a little baby running around not knowing what's going on. So that's what that's what that this is the spirit of adoption producing in you an adopted son of God if you let it. Mm -hmm. Now there's the key if you'll let it. If we'll let it. Because mm -hmm. I put myself in there too, of course, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We're all struggling and groaning and, and striving to allow God to have his way with that's us. That's right. So let's kind of break this down. Uh, and ye have received the spirit of adoption, why we whereby we cry, Abba Father. And so there's there's something within you crying after you get the new birth. When the new birth is born in you, it's the spirit crying in you. Mm -hmm. and, and it's crying out. First of all, it's crying. And it's crying out, Abba Father, right. because it recognizes the word. Right. It recognizes right. itself. Amen. And Abba is a personal, 
a, yeah. a personal reference right. to, to who God is. Exactly. It's not just kind of something that you've learned by getting a good, a good theological mm -hmm. understanding, but it's a personal revolution, revelation to you of who God is. Like, like remember Billy, Billy Paul talking about, he heard his daddy uh, crying in prayer and, and he, he was calling out Papa yeah. God mm -hmm. because God was not just something that he read about, right. but he was a personal, an actual, yeah. an actual person that he was fellowshipping with. Yes. <clears throat> and so when you're born, you... The first thing, like I, I, was, I kind of illustrated the last time, is that when you're when you're born again, uh, and, and in modern society and in, in the movies and whatnot, we you, we get the idea that the daddy ain't nowhere to be found. You know that daddy's pacing outside or whatever, and and all this is going on with the birth inside, and and the daddy don't really want nothing to do with that. But in the gospel, I believe it's different because when you're born again, you you come out looking at, at God. You come out at seeing who He is, mm -hmm. and we're not born as, as Brother Wade was bringing out. The last Sunday afternoon, you're not born from uh, some creed and dogma or whatever. You're not born from a woman because, uh, uh, I mean, think about how that that would just be a messed up picture. But you're born from the Word. You're born from the Father. You're born from God, and you come out looking at God. And so this is this is at the bottom. You come out looking at God down here. Mm -hmm. But what about here? Because yeah. this is supposed to produce God in flesh, the Son of Man back again. In his people, in his church. <clears throat> so it's see how it, 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 down at the bottom, it's, it kind of mirrors what happens at the top of the pyramid. At the at crying Abba Father mirrors what happens to wit the under, to, to wit the adoption. It, it's it it's the same process. That's what's so confusing. It goes up to to the to the wise of the world is it, it is the simplicity of the gospel. How simple how simple it really is. I love it. <clears throat> Brother Ram said an identification. He said that now God expresses himself, himself through his son, Christ Jesus, as he takes us in as adopted children and put his spirit in us, crying, Abba, Father, or, or in other words, my God, my God, and things that are to be. He said we have become from mortal beings, from time beings to eternal beings. When the word of God lit our souls and we become sons and daughters of God, with the attributes, the gene of God in us to be sons and daughters of the Father, God in heaven crying, Abba, Father, my God, my God, in my Father's house. <clears throat> and so uh, Romans, we already we just read that as we're kind of going through the responsive reading, how Romans 8 talks about going from carnal to spiritual, from being birthed. And Romans 8, 5, 8 says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And, you know, that's why it's so important to have the new birth. The new birth is the most important thing that you can have because without that, you don't have the teacher inside of you to recognize the Word, to identify with you, the, yourself with the Word, and, and to, to open the Word to you. And that's why so many, and their carnal ideas, they argue about the Word. That's why I'm convinced that you cannot reason somebody into the message or reason somebody into seeing the correct way of the Bible. And that's why man cannot really interpret the Word of God. It takes a revelation of, this, of, the, uh, of the Spirit to reveal it to someone. Yes. It's not something that you debate and argue somebody into, but if, if, if we just open ourselves up, open the doors of our heart to receive a revelation of, of God, then he'll, He's able to teach us and that cause us to understand. But on the other hand, you must, you must read, you must study for yourself, you must go to church and make yourself available. That's right. And that's, you know, all those different kind of things, it, it's, it's very difficult to really express. And, uh, well, let's just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Why well, I mean, organized religion? Brother, I'm saying, oh, it doesn't exactly mean that. When a man says that, get away from him. God watches over his word, you know, the Bible says. It's wrote just the way it should be, see? Now it puts it in such a way to deceive or to make the wise stumble over it. It's so simple that, that the reason they stumble over it, see? I keep reading, and that birth is from beneath. This earth is from the earth and it is against the spirit of God. The first birth to make us active here makes us mortal man because of the sin act of the garden. Made man come into the world by a woman 
And a man that is born of a woman is of a few days, but a man that is born of Christ is eternal. And he kind of keeps going on that line of the difference between man's wisdom and the and a, and a revelation from God. Somebody could could stand and out argue you, but it, it won't be a revelation. <clears throat> Then when a man is born again from heaven, he said, then who is this Melchizedek? He becomes a spirit babe in Christ. And then when this robe of flesh is dropped, there is a natural body, theophany, a body not made with hands, neither born of a woman that we go to. Not born of a woman, because you're not born of a woman. You're born from, from God. That's what the new birth is. You're born from a woman. And you kind of get into that. Why? You know, like, like some ask, well, what's the difference between the message and a denomination? Because if you're born from a denomination, you're born of a woman. Right. In the book of Revelation, it talks about that mother whore and all these all these little harlots that came out from that. Right. So you can't be born from that. Now, you can be born again if you're, I, I believe that you could hear a little bit of snippet of the word, be born again, in a, sitting in a denomination, but then you got to come out of that denomination because you can't sit there among all of that. But... <clears throat> But see, see what a denomination is, is as the word came forth, it started out in the first stage, Paul came out preaching, and, and everybody kind of cabbaged down, drew up, drew all their little lines and everything, and said, now we got it right here. And when they formed that, that denomination, drew a line around it, then it died. Mm -hmm. And something had to, another message had to come out to get people out of that. And so Irenaeus came along and he preached his message and out from that old denominational system that they had formed came out another group. And it just keep, kept coming on, coming on. As they would form a little denomination, they would say, well, now we got it. We're going to draw up what Irenaeus believed and draw up what Martin believed and just kept going on. We got it all pinned down and then it would, it would die. And so when, you, when it dies, because God keeps moving on, his word keeps moving on through all the different pieces of the uh, all the different stages of that wheat plant the corn of wheat the tassel the chug all the different stages and so we have to keep moving along with that right yes it, once it's denominated it, it can't bring forth life again <clears throat> here we are formed to the in paragraph 80 he says here we are formed to the word image to be a particular of the word feed on the word by being predestinated since the beginning you see that little spark of life that you had in you from the beginning when you started your journey Many of you can remember it. You join this church and join that church. You try this and that. Nothing satisfied. That's right. But one day you just recognized it, right? And here in, in the Mark of the Beast, Brother Adam's talking about how your heart is a womb. And the womb holds the seed and the seed is the gospel. No matter how many gamalias you're shed under or no matter how, how great your pastor is and how much you've read the Bible, it will never take life until the germ of life has come to it. So no matter how much you know the Bible and how well it is in your heart, you're still a sinner. The heart is a womb, and faith cometh by an open ear that's not been sealed by theology. Faith cometh by he healing, hearing. And then he talks about it gets down to the bottom, and the blood of Christ is applied, and in the blood comes a germ of life that goes into the seed and brings forth a newborn baby crying, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, my God, my God, why did I ever do those things? My God, my God. Yes. Not from a denomination, because he talks about how she can't, paragraph 87, she can't bring forth nothing but dead children. Then if a denomination can only bring forth a hybrid child, why do you want to belong to it for her? Now, brethren, that's the reason I'm against it. She's a whore to begin with. The Bible said she was a harlot. That's plain words, but I told you I was going to talk plain today. That's what she is. <clears throat> she commits spiritual fornications by taking <clears throat> dogma and creed instead of the word teaching her children to do the same thing. Now her children are come from the womb dead. She's got to die, that's exactly right, just the same as every man, <clears throat> listen, just as sure as every mortal person that breaks the womb of a woman will die, so, if, so will every person that's born by them will die because she's a hybrid, illegitimate, and her children are illegitimate, that's correct. I hope that don't go over your head. Now the reason, I, I believe that one of the reasons why Brother Brown puts so much emphasis on not uh, on how uh, on the denomination and what what's going on here is because now as we get closer to the end to this birth, there's there comes a time where there's no denominational system involved at all. It comes straight from God, straight down a conduit from God, straight into a prophet, and the people receive it, and and it's a virgin bride that receives the word. It has nothing to do with the denomination. Right. 
Yeah. Uh, some were come out from the nomination. Some were raised in the message. Of course, even if you're raised in the message, you you had your own ideas and everything that you had to come out of. Mm -hmm. So we'll say even even the ones of us that were raised in the message, we came out of our own little denominational ideas as well. But in the end, this birth, this birth is coming forth. There ain't no woman involved with it. That's right. There ain't nothing. It, it's straight born directly from God. Amen. <clears throat> <clears throat> to produce the word in flesh again. <clears throat> the Son of Man made manifest. And you know, we were looking at the Son of Man in, 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 in Abraham's day, and really, you follow that pattern of the Son of Man revealing himself it, it, three times. He came to the Abraham, our, our spiritual, you know, uh, the father of the faith and so forth, and, and he was there. Brother Brown talked about that in the message Jehovah Jireh and other messages about the Son of Man, God in flesh, talking to Abraham, identifying himself with Sarah in the tent behind him. And then he came again to the natural seed of Abraham on the, on the shores of Galilee, God walking in, veiled in human flesh of, of Jesus. And then he comes in the Son of Man again in this day to the royal seed of Abraham, producing himself back in flesh again. And so, and, and I'm bouncing around a little bit. I got a little bit off topic there, but I just kind of wanted to share that with you because it, all of this kind of stuff, it, it all of it meshes together. It, it. Right. I, I know it's a lot of information this morning, right. but everything just kind of uh, the birth of the word is producing God in flesh. Amen. And the spoken word is the original seed. Brother Ram said, "The true bride, there's going to be one. She, she's predestinated. She won't be denominated because she's predestinated. See, she don't have to worry about some denomination. She's already predestinated to take the place. Look like Mary. When Christ comes to his bride." She will be a virgin like Mary was, for God will not bring Christ through a womb of a whore, and neither will he bring the bride. He can't bring his word through a whore of his word. Them is horrible words, but that's what the Bible says. <laughs> Brother Brown was pretty straight, wasn't he? <laughs> so you say it's, it, 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 the bride, he's saying exactly what I just covered there. Uh, and the spoken word is the original seed again. He says, and when his bride comes, she will be the same product that he is, virgin. Did Christ belong to a denomination? Did Jehovah? Mm -hmm. Neither is his bride. She is part of him. She needs no dogma. She won't have any. She'll be absolutely virgin. How? By the word. Amen. She'll punctuate every word God says with an amen. Amen. Be it unto me according to thy word. Oh my, there you are. Punctuate God's word. Have a virgin womb. What would she come out of? A virgin womb, the Word. What did Jesus come out of? A virgin womb. And just like this little picture of, of Mary coming to bring the, uh, coming to Jerusalem or Bethlehem to, be, to, to deliver this baby. See, we have all these stories in the Old Testament of these women that were speaking. Rebecca spoke to Eliezer. All these women that were making Hannah confessing to, to uh, Eli. And making their confession and bringing forth a child. And all of these speak of what we are doing in this day. Be it unto me according to thy word. Bringing forth a child. The baby's born from a virgin womb. And that's what's happening in this day. As you cry, Abba Father, making your confession that you believe the word. Mm -hmm. And you keep speaking. And the word, you, the word, I believe the bride around the world is speaking herself into a body change as the ministers that Paul said the ministers were the stewardships of the mysteries the stewards of the mysteries of God and all around the world the bride the ministers have taken on the taken what brother Brandon has preached and are preaching the gospel like this mm -hmm. showing people these these types and things that brother Brandon spoke about but couldn't quite didn't have maybe time to, to get into all the different things of what was taking place and, and, you know, really it was hidden. Because right. when he preached the seven seals, he's, he's made comments about how the people didn't get it. And, and it would, uh, it, the, the people would begin to get it right about the time of the coming of the Lord. Right. Right. So I believe now is the time for us to see who we are and the hour that we're living in. The, the word is being born, not in just a baby form, but now it's come to, the, come to maturity. Right. With the maturity of the gospel, the, the bride is coming to a place where she is, it, it, it has allowed the word to to have complete preeminence in our life. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, some are at different stages and so forth. We know that. But what's happening is that the, the word is being born. Yes. 
God vindicates it to be true, he said, and the seed is not air with the shuck. Sure, is fulfilling this age when the seven seals are just proving the denominations has just been carriers. That's another one of Father's business to prove. Like Jesus said, I must be about my Father's business. Mm -hmm. and I, that's fantastic. I just want to point that out. I, the Father's business is to prove that the denominational system is just carriers. They're carrying the word alone, but in this last day, there's going to be a people that come out of that. Mm -hmm. They're virgin born. Amen. They're not held shackled down to this earth by creeds and dogmas or anything, but they've been loosed and they're going to be so loosed from the things of this world that they take flight. Amen. Amen. That's right. And the Father's business now is to show you that them denominations is not His. They're a man made system that deny the word, right? You say, well, Mary, the great virgin at the cross, He never called her mother. He called her woman, carrier, not mother. See, True, she was a carrier of the word, but she was not the word. He was the word. Oh, yes. Notice also she was not identified in the resurrection with him. He died and rose again because he was the word. She was just a carrier. She died and still in the grave. That's right. So she was just a carrier, not his mother, not God. She was just a carrier like the churches are. That's right. Shows she was just a carrier, not the word. Now, I know that's a little bit of a confusing statement to many. Because, you know, that, that you start getting in your head, well, Mary was not saved or Mary was not part of the bride. Because, you know, keep going on down and Mary was part of the upper room or, or, or wherever she was when she received the new birth. Right. She received the new birth and became part of the body of Christ. Right. But looking at it in type, uh, like this, this, uh, this wheat plant growing up, the word, the kernel of wheat was in her womb, but she at that time... Uh, well, let me say this right. She was not that corn of wheat. The corn of wheat was all of the Father, all everything, all of that eternal God bottled up in that little baby that was going to come forth from her. You see, and so just like in the in the New Testament, there's a process of different ones that are uh, care like the ones that just kind of coming along that didn't could not quite see as the word was eaten down. They couldn't quite see clearly everything about God. And so it, uh, each one goes from one stage to another through the stalk, the, 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 uh, the tassel formed right here. And I know this is a, a corn plant, uh, which, you know, we, we, corn of wheat is really a, a corn of wheat, not a corn of, like, a year of corn that you eat. But, you know, you can look at a corn, of, uh, corn growing out in the field and, and learn a lot about a wheat plant, too. Mm -hmm. So let's not get hung up on that. So, uh, but the, what he's trying to say is that the, the corn of wheat was that baby that's being born. And so that, you look, look at today, the same process is happening again, that in this age, in this day, that corn of wheat is being produced again. <clears throat> yes. The birth of the word again. The word, I'm, I'm about to run out of time. Y'all hang on with me just a few more minutes and, and we'll be done. I know uh, this is a little bit a little bit weighty and everything right before we get into the service. So uh, maybe just take some of these things and meditate on and, and maybe go through the book of Romans 8 and think about some of the things that were said and, um, and so forth. The seed is and not air with the sugar, brother, and said, she was the true seed. She was beyond. The, she was the shuck that brought forth the grain. Now the other two was carers of life only as the natural seed. Mary. Now remember, I said the other two. Now Mary don't make her God as some people tries to make her. She was not a God. No sir. She was only a carrier of the seed, like the rest of them was. But like faith in the word brings more to the real image. Like as the corn matures, the wheat comes forth a stalk, then it comes forth a pollen. Then it comes forth a shuck, but when you think that shuck, if you don't watch, it'll look just exactly like the real wheat. But when it's opened up, the real wheat is on the inside. It's only a carrier again. So you see Mary, not through sex, but through faith, something exactly like it. Mary was not that seed. Mary was a carrier of the seed. He was the genuine faith seed because the word of God is by faith that he gave to Abraham. And only faith can produce what God said he'd do. Faith in his word. Um, so uh, you know what let's just go ahead and stop right there and uh, we'll just continue on next time okay thank you